Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part three of my Java video tutorial series. Today, we're going to talk a lot about relational operators, logical operators, and the switch statement, among other things. So let's just jump right into it. All right, so we're just going to create public, which means it can be used by any other class. Class, which means this is a blueprint that we're going to use for our program. And eventually here, I will get into object-oriented programming, so all this makes a lot more sense. Then we're going to put our brackets inside of there, of course, like we've done before. Public, static, which means that only a class can call this. Void means that this guy does not return anything after it's done. And then string, two brackets, and args, just like we've done before, which means that the main function, which is the guy that executes inside of this program, receives string objects, maybe, or at least it needs that option. And as I go through this, I'm going to go over some of the things that I've done before in the past, and hopefully, after repeating a lot of this stuff, you guys will get it, which I'm sure sure you will. Okay, so I'm creating a random number. I'm going to make sure that it is an integer. And I'm going to call the math function random. And I'm going to say I want a number between 0 and 49. Remember, it doesn't go to 50. Almost, but not quite. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is relational operators. And here are all of Java's relational operators. There's greater than, less than, equal to, not equal to, greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to. So that's all of them. And then we're going to get into the if statement. You saw that a little bit in the last tutorial. If you haven't seen any of the other previous tutorials, definitely check those out. Otherwise, you may be confused by this. All right, so we're going to go random number. And if we want to check if it's less than 25, we just do that. Okay, it's real simple. I'm sure you guys got that. And we might want to print out a message on the screen if that is indeed true. Of course, it's a random number, so we have no idea what that number is. And we'll say something like the random number is less than 25. And print that out on the screen if that condition is true. And we can check to see if it is. And actually, before we do that, why don't we just print out the random number underneath of this guy. So, just go system out, print line, because we want to see it. The random number is, put a space inside of there, plus, and then random number, bracket, semicolon. Now let's execute this guy and see what we got. And I've also decided that in these tutorials, when I make a mistake, I'm going to point it out. So, I typed in Java lesson 3 dot Java is the name of this, and then I typed in lesson 3 like a bonehead. So, I'm going to type in Java lesson 3, and then I'm going to file save it. And now we can execute it. Make sure that you always have this class name the same as as the file name that you give it. And you can see here, the random number is less than 25 and the random number is 13. So that checked out real good. Well then we can come in here and do something like an else if and perform an additional check. So we can say something like random number is greater than 40, for example. And then come down here inside of these brackets. And I just copied that system out print line statement. The random number is greater than 40. And we can check it and see how it does. All right. So the random number is less than 2, and the random number is 18. Okay, so this tells us something. It says that whenever this first if statement is called, if this is true, it doesn't go down to the else if part. That's where the else comes into. So that's just in essence saying, if this comes back true, random number is less than 25, which it does, it's 18, then don't perform any other additional checks. Okay, so that's what that is telling you right there. And then we can also come in here. Do another else if statement. So we'll go else if it is equal to 18 popped up there. Let's just type 18 again. The random number is equal to 18, which we know it's not going to be, but what the heck. Let's just try it. Execute. Here the number is less than 25 and the random number is 1. Okay, so that's how we do an equals check. Now if we want to do a not equal to, let me just go in here and say not equal to 40. The random number is not equal to 40. And I promise these tutorials are going to get a lot more interesting. Actually, the next one's going to be a lot more interesting. Form additional checks. Random number is 39. We almost got 40. And you can see here the random number is not equal to 40, and the random number is 39. And then we can, of course, perform additional checks like greater than or equal to, which we would just come in here and say something like, else if is it greater than or equal to 40? Or we could come in here and say, is it less than or equal to? And I'm not going to bore you by going through that. All the code through this with a lot more comments is available underneath of this video if you want to check that out. And then you could say something like else if nothing above is true, and you can perform some additional statements or execute additional statements. So let's just say nothing worked. So this is like a default, which we're going to see here later on. 
whenever we talk about this switch statement. And we can execute this one last time just to see how it goes. Yep, the random number is 35, nothing worked. Okay, so there you see, there's the else statement coming into play as the default if none of these other things come back true. All right, so let's keep going here. And here you can see with my multi-line comment I made here, there are logical operators also available to you inside of Java, and there are six of those. And you have the not, which is basically gonna turn any true into a false. So if we would put else if random number is less than or equal to 18, and let's say that the value was 15. Well, this would come back true. However, if we would put this guy right there, that's gonna come back as a false. It basically just turns whatever is to the right of it into the opposite. Remember, we're dealing with Booleans and the only potential values are true or false. So it turns trues into falses and falses into trues. And instead of just speaking all this out, why don't I just show you what I'm talking about? If we come in here, it's always good to put everything inside of brackets. Well, let's just say if false. So false is the value. I just put that in there just like as if I was performing a check and false came back. And then we can do something like throw a print statement. I turned false into true. And that's in essence what that guy does. And I get a lot of questions about how to use escape sequences. So let's say I wanted to throw a new line into here. I'm just going to put a backslash and an end. And then we can see exactly what that does. I turn false into true. See, there's a new line inside of there. And this printed out because that's exactly what I did. If I would have put a true inside of here, that would have turned this whole statement into false. And this wouldn't have printed out on the screen at all. Leave any questions or comments below if I'm missing out on anything, but I'm sure you guys are getting it. All right, so let's use some of these other logical operators. Let's say we want to go if, and again, just put in false instead. What these are are conditional statements that we showed up here. So random number less than 25, if this was 20, for example, this would come back true. What I'm doing down here is just throwing in false or any of those other different things, those Boolean values, just so I can show you exactly what these guys do. Okay, so we're going to say our check came back false, and we're going to put the two and symbols inside of there. The other one came back true. All right, so what happens if that occurs with the and logical operator? Well, and will only execute the code inside of here if both of these guys are true. So we're just going to say both are true true like that and we know that they both are not true throw these quotes in here in the right place okay good and if we execute it you're going to see that that does not come up see random number is 45 that's the last thing that shows up on the screen however if we do change both of these into true and execute it both are true comes back and let's come in here and just get rid of this so it doesn't cloud up what we're working on okay so that's what the and does it evaluates to true for both of these guys and executes this code right here if both of these values are true if one of them is false, it doesn't allow that to occur. Well, then you have also the and function. What this guy does is even if this would come back as false, the normal double and would say, well, this one's false. So that means under any circumstances, this is going to return a false. Well, this and if you use just one and, it's going to still check to see if this has a value of true or not, even though it's totally irrelevant and it doesn't matter. You will almost never use this, but it is available to you. So that's why I bring it up. Well, then you can also use the or statement, and there it is. And what it's going to do is it's going to print out this code right here if either of these are true or if both of them are true. One is true. I can print that out, and I know that that's going to evaluate properly. And as you can see, one is true shows up. Now, if we also change this to true and execute, it's still going to come back as one is true, even though they both are true. Well, then you have the XOR statement. What it does is it evaluates to a true statement only if one is true and one is false. And there it is right there. And if we execute this guy, it's not going to print anything out the screen because you have two trues there. As you can see, nothing printed out. However, if we come in here and put one false statement in, it will indeed execute that line of code. As you can see, it did right there. Now let's come in here and just get rid of all this stuff. Again, the code is underneath this video if you want to go get it. There's a link to it. So let's just come in here and delete all that just so we have a nice clean workspace we can play around with because now I'm going to go over the conditional or the ternary operator. And basically what it does is it assigns one or another value based off of a condition. So I'm going to come in here and say biggest value creating a new variable named biggest value. I'm going to use the ternary operator to evaluate what the value of biggest value is based off of a condition. The condition's going to be, I'm going to create two additional ints or integers. And it's going to be value one 
is equal to, and just keep this simple, I'm just gonna put it in here like this, create another one, value two is equal to two, right like that. Then what I'm gonna say is, I'm gonna put a condition inside of this, and I'm gonna say the biggest value is gonna be assigned, whichever one of these is the biggest. So I'm gonna say, if value one is greater than value two, which is up above, then you put a little question mark inside of here, value one, colon, value two. And this is real simple, don't let this mess you up. Basically what it's saying is, if value one is greater than value two, if this comes back as true, I want you to assign the value of value one to the biggest value. If this condition right here is not true, I want the biggest value to have the value of value two. That's all it's saying right there. And here I can type that out, biggest value. And it prints out the value of the biggest value of the variable, and you can see here that it prints out too. So that is how you do that, and this is actually a very useful thing as we progress through this tutorial series. I'm going to show you a whole bunch of different things you can do with it. And then finally, we have the switch statement. And let's come in here and just get rid of this all together again. And you mainly use the switch statement whenever you have a limited number of possible values that what you're checking for is going to have. So let's say we create a character, and let's call it the grade. And let's just give it a value of B in this situation. That works. And let's get rid of switch here. Okay, so we created a new character and we gave it a value of B. Now we're going to type in switch. And then we're going to put inside here what we want to check. So we want to check if the value of the grade is equal to what we're going to check for below. Then you're going to put in your curly braces. And then you're going to say case the grade, which is right here, is equal to A. Then I want to perform all of the statements that follow. So, and my statement's just going to be system out, print line, and just say great job in this situation. And then you can, if you want to, type in break, and it will stop checking from that point on. However, if you want to continue checking for all these things underneath, get rid of the break statement. Basically what the break statement does is it says stop using the switch statement and jump down underneath of it. Okay, so that's basically what that's doing. Now we can check for all the other different potential grades that are out there. And we could say B, C, D, F. And we can say good, okay, bad, you failed. It's not meant to be kind. And then if we only have a potential for this to be an A, B, C, D, or an F, what this guy should be is actually default, which means this is what's gonna print out on the screen by default, or if they entered the wrong character. And if we execute this, you can see what happens. Remember, we gave it a value of B, and good job shows up, because good job is defined to show up right there. However, what would happen if I put in a lowercase b? I mean, you know, that's okay, you would think, until I come in here and then I run this and then it prints out you failed. Why did it do that? Because we have this set as a default. But what would happen if you wanted to catch for that situation? If you want to check for multiples, I'll just put it inside of there, right like that. And that would allow you to catch in the situation where it's a lowercase or an uppercase B. And you can see that it shows up right there. You can do all kinds of other different things with the switch statement as we go through the tutorial. I'm going to show you a whole bunch of really cool things. But basically, you do not need to use default. You do not need to use break. Completely up to you how you want to use it. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.